my tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be answering a few questions that I've seen asked a lot very frequently in the R's series. And I want to just clarify it so that people can be aware of how to identify these things and also suggest other uh, things to improve your R's if you're okay with that. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go over the users. I created a new test user here. And uh, a lot of things, uh, when we were creating the containers, people were asking like, oh, how do I know which user ID to put in there and stuff like that. So that's what I want to do now. I want to show you how you figure that out. First of all, let me enable SSH because we need to enable SSH to log into the NAS and then be able to identify our users uh, information. So let's open a new command prompt window and I'm going to log in with my administrator account, which is the first one that you create when you uh, set up your NAS. So I'm going to put SSH, the name, at the name of the NAS. It prompts us for the password, so we put that. And then once we're in, uh, we can see that uh, we're inside the NAS here. And if you put the command ID, then you get those details that I was mentioning before in our videos. The user ID for the administrator user, which is this one in my case, is 1026. And the group ID for that user is 100, which is what I was always using. But if you created another user, so let's uh, reconnect here and connect as a test user that I created previously, then you'll see that that changes. Okay, this user is not an administrator, so that's why I'm not being able to SSH into the NAS. So I'm gonna give it administrator uh, membership for now so that we can do this testing. So let's try again. Okay, now we're in as that other user, as you can see. So if I do ID, you'll see that the ID is different for this other user. This user's ID is 1027, which is one higher than the original first account that you create for your Synology NAS. The group ID is for users, so it's still 100, but that ID is different for the users. So you have to figure out which user you're gonna use for your containers. So you could use your administrator user, which is what I was using. That's why I was putting 1026. If not, if you have a, another special user for your Docker containers, then you have to f come into the NAS, ask that user and figure out what that ID is for that user. And that's what you're going to put in the environment variables for the containers. And another thing that you have to also know is that not only do you have to do that, let me get out of here. I don't need to be here anymore. you also need to give permissions to the right folders for that user. So you would have to come here into the shared folders and for example, the downloads, you would have to edit the permissions for that. And then you're gonna have to come here and make sure that that user that you're gonna be using for your containers has read and write permissions. If it doesn't have read and write permissions, you're gonna get an error saying that you, you don't have access to the folder or you cannot move things or create things or copy things or delete things from the folders. So that's another important thing that you have to do. You have to make sure that that ID that you're using has the appropriate permissions for those folders. When it comes to the users, that's basically the main thing that I've seen people asking a lot is how to get that user ID and having problems with the permissions with the groups. I mean, with the folders in the NAS. Remember that all your folders, the permissions for your folders are being managed by Synology. So all of that configuration has to be done here in Synology. You have to change the permissions here. You have to manage your users here. And when you do that, then your containers work, will work properly. I don't need this user anymore, so I'm gonna delete it. And we're back to how we were in the beginning. So that was the first thing that I wanted to cover.
The second thing that I wanted to cover here was as part of the series, and then some people mentioned that, I did that on purpose. I separated the folders into two different shares. Why? Because I wanted to showcase to you how the mounting of volumes in Docker works, right? So one Synology NAS share was being mounted as one folder in the containers and another one was being mounted as another folder inside the container. But effectively, it's like if you were attaching two different disks to your containers. So it's it works, right? But the, the thing if you notice is when you're moving files from one share to the other, it would take time. Because it, for the container, it is like it's handling two different disks. So the moving of files is slow because it has to slowly move everything from one disk to the other. Since you're using uh, a volume that is the same place in your NAS, you could speed that up by merging these two folders into one folder. And then what that does is, I don't know if you have noticed that, for example, if you have in the same hard disk, in one folder something and you cut it and then paste it in that same hard disk in another location the move is very very fast you don't have to wait for it to move because that's already in your, in the same disk so what it does is that it changes the pointers in the hard disk structure to where the files are without having to move the files so that's that's a, a better way to do the moving of the files it improves performance and stuff so we can do that by creating a separate share Let's say I'm going to name it HTPC uh, and then I'm going to say that it has all the media. And what we can do is when we create this, let's go ahead and go to the very front of this. And we have to grant our user that we're going to use for our Docker container the read and write privileges. And the rest we can just say no access or if you want to allow read only, you can do that too. So. Now we have a new folder here called HTPC. And what we can do is we can merge these two into that one. And that's going to make our process go a lot faster. So if we have here, let me see if I can open another one of these. Yeah, I can. Perfect. So let's go here into HTPC and let's go here into downloads. So we, we can reproduce this whole structure here. We can do it. Um, First, let's create a folder, downloads, and then we can grab all of this and we can do a like a copy too, and then we copy that to that. Oh, I think I put it in the wrong place. Let me check. Yeah, put it in the wrong place. Let me delete that. All right, it was supposed to be inside downloads. So there you go, copy move to HTPC downloads now. So now it's going to copy the whole structure that we created for the downloads inside here. So we see it's copying everything now. Um, yeah, I have some files in there, so that's why it's taking uh, a little bit of time. But the idea is to copy the whole structure of this in there. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other here, which is the media folder. So, wow, well, it's slow now. We create another folder called media. And we copy that structure also here so that we know for sure that everything is the same. So copy to, and then we go to HTPC media. And now we let it copy. So in the end, we would have the structure that we had before that was separated into two folders, but all of that inside this other folder called HTPC. And what we do is, we go back into our containers and wherever we had a reference to slash downloads or uh, slash, uh, for example, TV or movies or something like that, then we would merge all that into one folder, which would be slash HTPC, and then you follow the rest of the path from there on. So you would do that on all your configurations for the applications. I am not going to go in depth in this video of how to reconfigure the applications. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what you need to do. So in here we had, for example, in QBTurn, we had our downloads in different mappings. And uh, in this case, we're just going to get rid of 
all of them we're just gonna leave two mappings here the config for the config directory and the HTPC that is gonna be mapped to HTPC and that's all we're gonna have in qubit turned and the rest of the configurations are gonna be done inside the app and for example with uh, sonar we would go in here and we do the same thing we leave the config folder there but then where we had TV and anime in separate uh, mount points in here we're just gonna get rid of that and we're just gonna leave HTPC and HTPC is gonna be inside the container so we're gonna do that for all of the applications basically and then we go into the applications and we make the changes there for example if we go into qubit turned and we go into the gears we're gonna change things and here we had like downloads and incompletes so now it's gonna be different it's gonna be using the full path from HTPC so for example for this default safe path we'll put slash HTPC slash downloads slash completed and that's gonna be the whole full path for the completed downloads and for the incomplete it's gonna be HTPC downloads incompleted torrents and in here for the monitor folder we put HTPC downloads torrents and CBs and here which is a default save is the same as this one up there so we make those changes here in the configuration so now as far as the container is aware all of it looks like one disk which contains the slash HTPC directory so whenever it's moving stuff from one place to another it's going to be a lot faster because it's going to be done within the same logical disk okay so that's what we wanted to do as an improvement here and for example for one of the r's we would go here and remember we had slash anime and slash tv we are going to change that for htpc slash media slash anime htpc slash media slash tv and that's now our root folders here and then in the download clients the mapping is going to be different because it's not going to be slash downloads and then slash download sonar for example no since we're mapping the same root folder everywhere is going to be exactly the same path so we're going to say locally we have htpc downloads completed sonar and that's also the same in the downloader so we just put the same thing everywhere the only thing that we would need to know now is that if we had downloaded anything before then each series would have been mapped to a folder for example slash tv slash ahsoka in my case i deleted everything from the apps that's why you don't see it but you would see slash tv slash ahsoka for example so then you have to edit that and point to the new location which would be uh, slash htpc slash uh, media slash tv slash ahsoka and you do that for all of your series if you have any so yeah and that's all the changes that you need to do inside the application basically that's going to be for all of the applications so if you need to make changes to radar it will be the same thing you go and change in here the root you change the mapping for the download client and if you have any movies you would also make those changes i don't want to make the video too long i'm just you know giving you a, a, a suggestion if you want to make it faster because it's not really necessary it'll work as uh, I was setting it up in the series so far but yeah it was something that people mentioned and I want to make sure that you're aware of that and the benefit that it provides you to do that so yes that's gonna be it for this video I just wanted to make a short video addressing questions that I saw during the series and giving you a, a tip if you want to have faster moving of the files on how you can do it. Um, hoping you like it. I'll see you on the next one. I'm going to probably uh, start making a new series and I'm going to continue the PHP programming series that I had planned that I have left in the, in the backlog for a while. So yeah, you'll see more videos that are more geared towards DevOps and programming and stuff like that. I'll still make some videos regarding open source applications. I have a few requests from people that I am working with. So you'll see those too. And yeah, see you on the next one. Remember, if you like the video, uh, like it, please share it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. If you like the content, feel free to donate using PayPal or Bitcoin. And uh, comment in, in the description below if you would like to see a, a content featured i'm gonna do my best to provide you that content uh i've had some people requesting changes to the raspberry pi pixie um server uh, because there's been some changes in several uh, linux distributions 
I'm gonna see if it is uh, possible to do without having to uh, create a lot of maintenance for that script because honestly I created it for people to use Raspbian OS uh, so I'll see how feasible it is if it if it complicates things too much I might not uh, try to accommodate other distros like OpenELEC or Ubuntu or, or whatever so right now is um, thought of to be for Raspbian users but yeah I'll, I'll take a look at that uh, so yeah see you on the next one take care